In this video, we're going to talk about solubility. And this is a lecture that we've already had in class. So if you feel comfortable with the material, feel free to move on uh, to the next video. The first thing we want to know about solubility and solutions in general is the two components, solute and solvent. So solute is what is being dissolved. Solvent is what we're dissolving into. And so together, they make a solution. You need to remember that solute is what we are dissolving, and then solvent is what we dissolve into. One of the most common examples that you would probably be familiar with is salt water. We think about the solute being the salt, and we put that into the water, and it dissolves. So that makes the solute the salt, and then the solvent would be water. One of the things you want to note is water is going to be what we call the universal solvent. It's one of the most common things used in chemistry as a solvent. When we talk about solubility, we're talking about being able to dissolve. The word soluble, we learned that word earlier in the year, and soluble means able to dissolve. Solubility talks about how much of something can dissolve. When we look at solubility, we're using it as a number. So the definition says the maximum amount of solute that dissolves in a specific amount of solvent. Solubility tells you how much you're dissolving of something. Most common amount that we're going to use in chemistry is going to be 100 grams of water. And one of the things we mentioned in class is that for water, one gram of water is actually equal to one milliliter of water. And that's only true for water. That doesn't really apply to other chemicals. So whenever we're going to write this, uh, we're going to use one, uh, grams of solute divided by 100 grams of water. And really all that tells you is how much you're dissolving into 100 grams or 100 milliliters of water. We're going to go ahead and look at a solubility curve now and show you how to read those. The first thing you'll probably notice at the bottom is temperature. And then over here on the y-axis, we've got grams of solute per 100 grams of water. That's what we call solubility. The bottom axis is going to tell us the uh, temperature for our solution. The y-axis is going to tell you how much you can dissolve. And for most of these lines, we notice as temperature increases, most of the lines go up. We'll talk about in another video uh, which lines go up, which lines go down. But we're going to go ahead and start this first question. What is the solubility of KNO3 at 50 degrees Celsius? The first thing we want to do is locate our KNO3 line. And we see it right here in the middle of the screen. We're going to find 50 degrees. And we're going to trace 50 all the way up to where it hits KNO3. And we're going to follow our axis back over to the Y. And we're going to see right here that 80 is the answer. But we got to write out the full unit. And so the way this is written is we say 80 grams of KNO3 can dissolve per 100 grams of water. So the solubility of KNO3 at 50 degrees Celsius, we can dissolve 80 grams of KNO3 in 100 grams of water. That's the maximum amount you can dissolve. What is the solubility of NH3 at 20 degrees Celsius? We're going to go down to our line, find 20 degrees. We're going to find where it meets NH3. And if we notice right here, it's just under the halfway point. So it's not quite 55. We need to make sure we estimate that accordingly. So we could say something like 52, 53, anywhere in that nature. And we'll even say about 53 grams of NH3 per 100 grams of H2O. And again, that means at 20 degrees, the most we can dissolve is 53 grams of NH3. 